Oh yeah. This all started with a hole in the ground that was covered by two bricks that the inspector didn't touch. It's scary to think that if Mike wasn't here and the crew wasn't here and Damon, then we, we'd be pretty screwed. I'd say that's not connected. Oh, car, where does that go? Oh, no! You gotta be joking me. Oh, yay. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> This is part two of a story about a house that's got a whole lot of problems. Hello. Hi, I'm Sarah. Sarah, I'm Mike. Nice to meet you. Hi, Fred. Fred, pleasure to meet you. This is a, such a charming neighborhood. Yeah, it's great. I love really, it. really like this. Can come I come in? in? Yeah, Absolutely. come on in. I'll show you. Fred and Sarah bought their first home downtown in a, a nice neighborhood. Charming, historical, and it's gorgeous. The potential of this house was phenomenal. And I knew that we could really make it our home and we could start our family here. And, that was, that was a big deal for me. They even paid extra for a walkthrough with the original home inspector, and they paid extra for a roof inspection and a termite inspection. The previous owners did have the house inspected, but we were able to pay for a walkthrough. At the end of the day, we were told this was a solid house. It was in good shape. It was going to last for, you know, years to come. After they moved in, Fred and Sarah noticed they had some problems. We are cleaning out the air conditioner, which was just filled with leaves and dirt. So I was using the hose, and the amount of water we, we were using was not accounted for on the ground. And then we found a pile of bricks. So the bricks were like this, yes? Uh, they were stacked up. I put that plastic egg just to help a little bit. Uh, I moved them and found a hole in the cement, which uh, you could see visibly that the foundation was damaged through this hole. So we called the inspection company back and you know we told them the situation and we felt that this was something that they should have found the hole i mean it's a hole the inspectors basically said oh there was something there so we couldn't see it it's not our problem if they move the bricks there's a hole here well, when you have a hole that's direct to the side of your foundation and you have a concrete pad that runs towards that hole it fills up oh that really goes deep and with my camera showing all kinds of debris and all stuff that's fallen down there and actually my camera went down pretty deep where the hell's that water going this area here yep. is where we actually have the hole in the ground, right here, right? And that hole in the ground, it, it did show some surface mold on the bottom. Yeah. So you know what I want you to do? You want to pull this out? I want you to pull this out. Mike rightfully wants this down. This is what's been deteriorating from water. We want to know why. We want to know where it's coming in. We found out exactly where, and that became one huge problem. We were wondering where the mold issue was coming from. I think we found it. We have a gaping hole in our foundation wall right here. This is what we tore down. You know, it took us uh, 15, 20 minutes to tear down. It's going to take us days to fix. All right, I'd like to hear what the engineer says. I'd I'll like to know. see what everybody puts together on this one. OK. If it doesn't get replaced, it would have continued to rot. Then we end up with a foundation wall that has zero support laterally. So the worst case scenario would be that this foundation wall would end up collapsing into the basement. The other issue is that this entire side of the house sags, and it could be significant sagging to the point where it's it's not really inhabitable because things, right. things have dropped six, eight, ten inches. If that wasn't bad enough, we also discovered mold in the downstairs bathroom when we started to pull it apart. We called an alliance, and they did a level three remediation. The basement basically has to be gutted. We also found mold up in the bathroom. We found mold on the main floor. So it's basically throughout this whole house. Right now, I can't continue without them cleaning it out. I need a safe environment for my workers as well as the homeowners who live here. After about two weeks of mold remediation, cleaning, we could finally get back to doing what we're supposed to do. That's the foundation. It is the pivotal point. This is where we move forward. I can get to this beam, the structural beam. 
Once I replace this, I can finish this house, what we originally came here for. I can have colors, guys, waterproof on the outside once we get the block in. Start restructuring the walls in here. Start drywalling, you know, cleaning this up, insulating. It, it allows me to go forward on the whole job. Ah. Oh. These were the big issues, but they're not the only ones. We still have two fireplaces that we have to deal with. We actually heard from our neighbors about having issues with her fireplace, and so it kind of did make us nervous. OK, so normally what we do, and it is in the report, by the way, is to have a fireplace specialist come in and take a look and make sure that it's usable, it's safe, before you light a fire. And that's exactly what we did. AIM Chimney guys came in and did a full inspection. Well, so far, just from a a first glimpse, we've looked at the older chimney manufactured system here, between the rust and how weak it is. But this system is literally falling apart. Worst case scenario, this chimney could set the house on fire. Here it comes. Both fireplaces were too old to repair. We had to take them out. One, two, three, go. Last but not least, the big leaky window. OK, that is an extremely wet rag. More than likely, it's leaking under there, which has now the possibility of mold in here. And that's just one spot right here. The mold, number one spots, windows, bottom, doors. Finally, after four weeks, we brought Fred and Sarah home to show them the damage from all the problems. It's overwhelming. The amount of work that has been done already and the amount of work that sounds like still has to be done, it's scary. We've got it everything to do with the bathroom, right? And this looks, again, this doesn't look that big. But when we opened it, there was wood structure. See this new block here? Yes. This is all new block. We actually had to dig right down here, and this turned into a catastrophe, to be honest with you. That downspout went into the ground, OK? And I collected all the water from all the rain and rotted out the structure on this side of the house. So we had to bring in our foundation, guys, remove the beam, get permits, reinforce all this so we could lift the, not lift the house, but hold the house to reinforce the, the cinder block wall to carry it up. So structurally, this has been a disaster, having everyone in here trying to determine engineers, what we can do with this. What happened here affected your neighbor. We had to structurally fix your neighbor's side as well. Oh to this point, right up to about here, both houses, there was a problem with them. We had to call them out. Look, at, we've got problems here. We've got to solve this problem. We thought we did everything to protect ourselves in this house. And still, the problems is just problem after problem after problem. And it's, it's hard. It's just say a box, yep. gas insert, it comes up, and then another box. They couldn't do one solid window, so he's doing it in two. Yep. I want to run a drainage pipe underneath in the center and, and create a cove that the water comes to and feed it into this. OK. Hey, you're doing a good job. Thank you very much. Real Thanks good for job. helping me out here. Another month? <laughs> The one in the basement, I'm going to encourage that we keep it and turn it into a candle zone. They want us to do whatever's easier. They feel so bad that we're even dealing with this. Oh, see now. And I feel bad about yeah. that. I keep telling them, don't worry. This is our job. Yeah, well, we can't do that neither. They're worried that we're spending so exactly. much money and we're trying to help them. You know what? That's, I don't want them to think that we're not going to do it. Yeah, so I'll work with Joey on that and we'll see if we can get them an electric in All there, right. okay? Probably going to be up about maybe five feet here, I'm thinking. So you're going to build a box here. We're then let AIM Chimney come in the day after. They're going to run their pipe up. We're going to run the chase up the back for the fireplace, the, uh, the exhaust. And then we're going to build a little box there after, letting in as much light as possible. OK. I also want you to restructure the stairs, OK? You're going to bring structure right onto the block. You can give it a header if you want, OK? But I want it totally restructured down to solid concrete, to the okay, block. right to the block. That should be enough for you guys. Doesn't look like it from here, but that's a lot of work. Also, I'll have the electricians here and the plumbers here as well. Now, Fred and Sarah love the fireplaces, so instead of taking the one in the basement out, let's just give them a new electric insert. We can get electrical to this. It means be more work for me. 
why don't we just order one? Why don't we fit, get the size, order one, get the ampage on it so he knows what he's dealing with, and then he can run it in. We'll get it in no matter what. Okay, because generally they run on regular household amperage, so if it's Pong outlet, all he has to do is put a receptacle in there. If you can get the line in, we can, I don't care if I have to rip this apart to get it in, so I want to give it to them, might as well just do it. Stuff. We're putting in uh, hurricane ties to satisfy the uh, structural requirements of the engineer who did engineer both the block wall as well as the supporting wall underneath. And this will help stabilize the, the existing floor joists to keep them straight, keep them bolted together. Considering the water penetration through the foundation wall and obviously uh, a waterproofing problem, it is critical to do camera inspection of the sanitary line and storm line. In this case, we only have one line combined, uh, which takes storm and sanitary. But the key thing here is to make sure that that line is in a good working order so we are able to take the, the rainwater and any water that accumulates on the outside and take that away properly through, uh, uh, through the drainage system. Okay, what did we find out here? What is this? We uh, those are, uh, we have a drain. We got a drain that I scoped. Um, it takes me over to uh, to the other side of the house. Um, to here, to clean yes, up? Yes, where I tie in. There's actually a trap, but that trap is uh, below four foot mark, so it's below the freezing point. Good. So thank God. No, no, now I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you why. I need to control water, because everything runs this way. Yeah. We've gone to all this work, and obviously I cannot bring that, you know, cement up to this height. So we're going to have a step down here. We're going to bench it in here. Mm -hmm. Here's what I want to do. I want to run a drainage pipe underneath in the center and, and create a cove that the water comes to and feed it into this. Can I do that? Yes, of course, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And you just solved all my problems. <laughs> Today is a huge freaking day. We have AIM chimney in here. They have to run out their venting by 4 o'clock. I have spray foam coming at end of day 4 o'clock. Everyone is now rushing to get as much work done as possible today so I can get that spray foam so I can actually close it off. I have Dominic here from Trimbo Windows who's putting in a new window for us, which is going to be great. And last but not least, we have Solutions Electric here today. Everyone's working together to get things done here because we are in a race for time. We need to get things done and get these people back into their house. You don't know what you're gonna come across when you take these windows out. Things are crooked, like here, there, there was like three layers of siding on here, rotted sill. Well, you get that on the newer homes too. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, it's more the, everything's crooked, like very crooked in these older homes. Can you help inside her? Oh, good. The old fireplace was wood burning. Being but 35 years old, its time had come. Now we're gonna put in a nice gas unit, high efficient. All it's gotta do is take the remote control, flick a switch, instant flame. It's completely above and beyond what we even, in our wildest dreams, could have imagined had to be done to this house. Okay, crap loads of money this is going to cost. Crap loads. Uh, crap loads is a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, Joe, I've been playing with the idea of removing this. This blocking so much light. I'm bringing the fireplace back to almost what it was before, and I want to let more light into this, so you know what that means? I'm going to lose this. No problem. Okay, so do what you got to do to pull the electrical, and then I'll start tearing it apart. Okay. Thank you, buddy. How many times can you splice the wire? There's going to be a laundry room here, uh, so there's a lot of plumbing to do. Most of the copper here actually needs attention, so we're running new packs and we're wrapping in for uh, a new laundry tub, which is going to be installed here. The guys will also prepare the, uh, the floor drain area for us so we can run a new 4-inch uh, PVC floor drain. 
so that it's close to the hot water tank and the furnace. So we're going to bring it up to the current code requirements and, uh, and make it all uh, plumbing perfect. So we're gonna start taking this down, okay? This is our only chance now that everything, everyone's moved out of the way, we have about an hour to get this down. Yeah, this is blocking off all natural light coming in this way. So why don't you guys pick a side, start on this, and then we're gonna call everyone up at the end of the day when all the trades are gone and we're gonna lift this floor. I don't know what kind of sentimental value they have to these things, but take care of them, put them upstairs, wrap them in something, mark it so they know what it is, okay? okay. So after we tore out the closet and the old fireplace, we had big patches of flooring that I can't match. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rip out the old flooring, we're gonna put down a new engineered hardwood and use tile along the front of the house. Eco, yeah, it's a little more environmentally friendly, yeah. zero ODP, and uh, a little more recycled content in it. Yeah. That's what people are looking for—a little more green. The main gas fireplace installation is complete, so Steve can finish all the flashing work to make sure the new chimney stack is waterproof. Even though Fred and Sarah had a roof inspection, I asked Steve to take a look and see what kind of shape it's in. So the inspector said 10 years, 10 to 15 years, I think he said. And that'd be a push. I'd say, like, realistically, maybe more like 5 to 10. Um, but then again, you know, it's a, you know, it's the roof's older, so it's in yeah. that age of needing some maintenance. Yeah. So it's with, with life left in the roof, it's better to maintain it now and then replace the roof when the life of the product is, yeah. is, is you know, close to finished. Yeah. Versus that would be too premature to do now. OK, good. That's good. Good news. Thanks, man. See ya. We're using a, a flex line from inside the, the basement to uh, run our gas line to our fireplace. Um, a lot easier to work with. You can, you know, less connections, one connection right here, one downstairs. Um, it's very flexible. Um, you can bend this right to a 90 degree tight um, and doesn't kink or anything. So it's, it's getting a lot more popular to use uh, this type of flex connection. So hold the house up, probably share. I got it. Put this to the side. There you go. Now the reason for tearing off the drywall in the ceiling, first of all, it had mold. I'm not gonna tear down just a little bit. We tore down all of it so I can now level the whole ceiling. The less you put on, the faster it dries, and the faster you can get the job done. A lot of guys will they'll cake it on and they'll leave it caked on, and they'll sand half that product off. It's not what we're doing. We're trying to put it on, and we're trying not to sand it. It's basically the, the whole trick to this. 
A lot of people think this is a chore, but this is an art. If you can put it on tight and enjoy it, you'll, you'll do a better job. I want you to take the brick off from here down, okay? I want to keep the brick from here on up. We're going to reuse the mantle that they had on the original fireplace. Whoa! It's hard enough right now. I mean, we're just starting out. You know, we bought this house, which was a lot of money for us, and now that's another shocking thing is the, the how much money is actually having to be put into this house after we already paid so much for the house. This is actually my first tile job by myself, so kind of excited to actually lay a whole floor instead of being the person that goes and does all the cuts and back butters. So, looks pretty good so far. <laughs> That's the wave of the future. This is what the Europeans have been using for years and uh, we've just been getting on the bandwagon. It doesn't need to be glued or screwed in the middle to keep it down because if you have a quarter inch wear layer, the next layer is actually white oak as well, but it runs perpendicular to the top layer. And you can see the bottom layer, also white oak, runs this way. Right. So this is laminated together or engineered together, whatever yeah. you want to call it, which keeps it stable. You know what? It's a beautiful floor. It's really durable. It works well in this room and it's going to tie into everything. We've removed the previous finish that was on here because we want to match the stain to the hardwood that's gone in. After we scraped the finish off, we sanded it, made sure the finish was completely removed. Then we condition it with water. Water just allows the uh, grains to open. So we're trying to get this stain as dark as possible to match the hardwood, which is a very dark wood. So uh, by conditioning it, allowing the stain to really penetrate, it's gonna match the um, hardwood that's gone in. I generally just kind of wipe in circles, make sure it's penetrating into the grain and give a final wipe with the grain to just kind of even out the stain and make sure it's blended completely. What I want to do, we're going to reuse the mantle. The one that was upstairs, I want to bring back down here, just because they fell in love with that fireplace upstairs. It's now gone, we gave them a new one, but they're going to keep the brick, give them their old mantle back, and we've sort of shifted that fireplace upstairs and brought it down here for them. Very nice. A very nice job, guys. Last job of a long, long day is getting this down so I can actually get some tiles laid on this floor by tomorrow. If I don't do this by the end of the day, people walk on it, dent it in. I need to do this kind of stuff at the end of the day. This is the vision I did see with this room. When I first came in here and I saw this bulking closet, it was just a closet, but it took so much from this room. This room was very dingy. It had a lot of potential. And I think that's what they saw when they first bought the house. When they first came in here, I think they saw potential. And that's what I saw when I came in here. So this is realizing this house's potential right here. I can take it to me a bit. How's that? OK, that's perfect. OK. Little bumps? Oh, just on your side. My side is perfect. Maybe for tile, I love it. Oh, 
Oh, look at that, it's roots. Ah, ah, I am out of here. The last thing they want to do is put in $100,000, $200,000 worth of work in the house that they did not expect. Now that we're actually seeing movement, seeing progress, it's definitely exciting. It's definitely you know, a good feeling to know, OK, well, we have the right people on the job. When you put the water into the container, if you were to put the powder in first, because the bucket's round, it would stick into the corners, and you'd always have powder in your in your mix. So if you put water in, when you dump the mo the mortar into the container, it'll it won't stick to the sides, and that way we get a nice uh, s smooth mix and doesn't have any dust or rock or powder in it, right? I actually really enjoy doing tiles. It's fun to do something different because uh, we've done a lot of framing and baseboard and stuff, and it's cool to learn something new. Doing tile, you get to see right away what you've done, and it's cool to look at something. It's a big part of the floor, I think, and everyone's going to notice it. It's the first thing you step on when you walk in the door. I like it. We're using solid granite on the fireplace facing. Granite is 100% natural stone, and because of this, any heat from the fireplace is dissipated quickly. And that means there is a minimal expansion or contraction. When I say the job keeps going and, you know, creating more and more issues, this is it, even the finish part. I can't go with a cheap baseboard in a room when I have a, you know, a beautiful finished floor. Beautiful finished tile, high ceilings. This is an old place. This is sort of representing the rest of the house. I mean, the rest of the house has huge casing, huge baseboard everywhere else. I wanted to bring it back to what it was. If you can start your drain tomorrow, get it roughed in. Tie it in here, we'll help you dig it back. Okay. Okay, and we're not gonna use just a regular drain here. We're gonna use a trough drain? That's correct. I'll measure the distance uh, that will be that will be suitable for this uh, for this area, and I'll try to pick something, you know, the largest possible size that can scoop as much or absorb as much water as, as yeah, possible. Yeah, because we're almost 20 feet here, right? Yeah. You want a big, as big a one as possible. Okay, so Corey, what's your idea for the step down here? Because I know we have to bench this. We actually have to do an, almost an underpinning under this slab, right? Because we mm -hmm. don't want to undermine it. Well, what I was thinking is is that we can pour uh, a curb about 12 inches thick. Yeah. That way it'll take care of the corner of this new addition. Like a bench wall. Yeah, exactly. And it'll tie into the existing foundation. Right. We'll use yeah. a concrete vibrator. Yeah. And we can actually vibrate the concrete right into all those crevices. Oh, that's great. I'll actually seep right in there and clog every single hole. I love it. All Thank right, you. I'm up for it. Make it happen. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. No problem. So right now I have Kate and Carl installing all the framing to support the siding on the outside of the house. It now allows Steve to add his siding and finish off the outside at this point. Better. And now Steve can replace the damage downspout and feed it back into the new drainage system. So this is great for tight spaces, isn't it? Yes, it's it is. a small little air conditioner. It's made for tighter areas where you need to get around things where you don't want to block areas. Right, because if we put a regular size air conditioner in here, how are we going to have access back here, right? It's not going to be a lot of access, but it's like a utility area. Yep.
contortionist for these last couple of tiles. I tiled myself into a corner, not really planning this out properly. And uh, unfortunately, that made it a lot more work for me to work myself out and finish my tiles at the end of the day because I have to grow it for Monday. But it's going well, kind of. Just a little painful. Hold on. <sighs> So here we are, the final stages before giving the house back to Sarah and Fred. I removed some baseboard in the basement so the carpet guys can come in. What did I find? Another freaking problem. So as I'm expecting it further, it looks like there's so much moisture in here that it's actually rotted out my bottom plate, which makes me very nervous because this is absolutely soaked. That's wood. You think you've seen everything? I've never seen like a mattress foam inside a wall before. I have no idea what this is for, whether it was to soak up the water to begin with. I think this is the main stack for our house. So everything is draining into this thing and obviously we have a major leak here. I do not know why I don't see any more signs of water outside. Really, I should have seen leaching water here because this is a pretty significant leak. The biggest issue is that it's unsanitary. This is wastewater. We're talking toilet water, shower water, anything that goes down a drain in this house is leaking into this wall. Oh man, look at that. Here, if I pull off a bit of baseboard, I see a little bit of mold. What did I do? I just pulled it a little bit. You know what came with it? Half of the silk plate. Oh my God. So this is the only reason I found this. We had no idea there was a leak. There was no staining on the concrete. And you know, as soon as I started pulling out insulation and smelling it, yeah. I knew that I was, you know, elbow deep into it. And again, it's, it's not even glued, but also it's so short. Yeah. What we're gonna have to do is open up a little bit more and then find out. We're not gonna create so much damage here. Just to, you know, you just wanna see Give it. Give me a little bit more opening so I can find out where this thing takes me. I'd say that's not connected. I shouldn't be able to do this. Holy crap, where does that go? Oh! No! You gotta be joking. I just wanna take this off, man. And just see where it goes. Take the whole thing off. Well, I just want to see where this ends. I'm trying to not spill any more sewage in this place. I know why we didn't see any moisture on the concrete. What was happening is enough of it was coming down this pipe and holding it. It was probably bellied, yeah, and nothing was coming out that end. So whatever little was coming out here, it was just soaking into the insulation, the wood, and it was. That's why there was no staining out here. And if I didn't find this before carpet, my God, she. We wouldn't be worrying about mold anymore. We'd be worrying about disease. Yeah. You know what I want here? Yeah. I want this wall done. Reframe it. It looks like we're reframing anyway. Okay. Great way to start the weekend. Oh, yay. Yeah, this is what plumbing is all about. You got a mask for me too? No. Oh, no, no, you're a first year apprentice. You don't get one. <laughs> it's everywhere. <laughs> okay, go. Aw. Are you go. a girl? Yes, I am. <laughs>
uh, and then paint it. The reality is paint covers color better than primer does. Give me one hour. One hour. One hour. I said one five. hour. Don't ask him. One hour. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're the witness. You're the witness. <laughs> one hour. One hour. I'm only as strong as you know my team, right? That's right. <laughs> All right, one hour. So, okay. One hour. Get it in. Hurry up! I gotta wash my clothes. <laughs> Ready, one, two, three. Oh, yeah, baby. What does energy efficient mean, heavy? Energy efficient means heavy. Hey, MJ and Adam, tell me why again you guys aren't doing this? Uh, you didn't ask me. Ooh, ho, ho, ho. That is one heavy mama. That's one of the heavier washing machines I've ever lifted, I think. Okay. Oh, I'm glad that little adventure's over. No, really, you still got to plug them in, no? By putting in the new fireplace, it actually opens up one side of the stairs. And by code, I now have to put up a railing. I'll cut the posts in, mount my posts, then I can raise my rails, and I'll fill in the pickets afterwards. So the last thing you do is put the pickets in. These I'm just marking level to match with the posts. I'll cut them on the saw and then I can glue and nail them in. Glue being the secret sauce. That's where all the strength comes from, the glue. We pre-stained all these posts just in the hope that uh, there wouldn't be a lot of touch-ups, but once they put a little hole in like that to fill it, drill it out, what I had to do was sand the whole thing down so the stain would take evenly again and restain it. If you just touch it up, it's not gonna blend. You're safer just to uh, sand the whole thing down, redo it, it'd be much easier. It's the same with the tread if you have an issue on the tread, just re-sand it, redo it. This is sort of like uh, the last piece of the puzzle to support these stairs. So we've, uh, we've actually had some brackets made and I'm just gonna drive some five inch bolts through the place just to help support this. Because there's nothing supporting these stairs, these stairs should have been brought to the landing, they weren't. So this is gonna help support everything. I never noticed how low that door handle was. Uh, yeah, they were short in the old days. <laughs> <laughs> well, they get taller as the next generation comes in here. You know what? That looks really good. You like it? Wow, what a difference how open this is. Like, you know, really that was a good yeah. choice to take this down. So we got downstairs complete, laundry room. Yep. And set up for a future bathroom. Absolutely. Drains in, concrete, foundation is obviously done, otherwise we wouldn't be here today. The big reasons why we're here are all taken care of, plus a million other things. Uh, I wouldn't mind taking a look at downstairs just sure. to see what it looks like before we bring them in. I know they're excited to see it. I like the rails. Yeah. Now that's what I want to see. That's it. I like the way they did the brackets. Whose yeah. idea was this? Uh, it was, I worked with Andrew on it. I, uh, I told him what I wanted. He designed it, sent it over to the fabricator. He fabricated it, we put it in. Damn, it even looks good down here. Yeah, we made it look really nice down here compared to what it was you remember, obviously, yeah. so. Very good, Damon. You know what? Let's not waste time. Let's go get him. All right. Good We're job. Excited. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, Damon felt uh, rather in a good mood. He sort of took a lot down. He took down this, oh this, this closet that was here. The, uh, the red wall. The red wall is gone. <laughs> I can't even believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this all started with the first look of the fireplace, didn't it, you know? And I liked the look of the fireplace. I liked the opportunity. It's a good thing, really, that uh, it didn't burn the houses down. But it led to many things, like a new flooring. Chris is incredible with his flooring. He just made it tie right back in and make it look like it's still old, but it's still new. Yeah, right? it yeah. looks perfect. New tiled front. It looks amazing. It's beautiful. Oh my god! <laughs> you guys like read our minds when, like, when we thought what we were gonna do with this place. 
you literally read our minds. Like, I can't even believe it. And that was an accident. Yeah. <laughs> we weren't supposed to go this far. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if you can read minds, then you, you know we're doing something well, right. Yeah. For our job, we have to sort of read minds, right? How do you like yeah. the color? Oh, it's, it's, it's gorgeous. Beautiful. Damon picked the color. Yeah, it's so amazing. He's sort of becoming a designer guy, isn't he? Oh, yeah. you said it. You <laughs> went and said it. <laughs> oh, wow. I don't quite feel like this is real. Yeah. Like, like, I really feel shocked. like I'm dreaming right now. Oh, come on over here. After taking all of this down, everything, the hearth, you name it, completely done, completely rebuilt, Damon's got this little bit of a, a sculpture that I, I kind of like at the T-look oh, yeah. at the top. And what it does is just makes it nice and big and bold. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. The work in the backyard, which was really almost as much, if not more, than this area in itself, was the structure web, restructuring the house from the rot from the water penetration to bringing in and moving all the electrical, moving the gas lines, moving a brand new air conditioner is also installed in the back. So you can see through this beautiful window. Why don't you take a look beautiful. at this window? <laughs> Come on. It's all glass. Yep, now you can Almost. take a look outside. Look at that. <laughs> I can't even speak. I, oh my gosh, my heart is just pounding. <laughs> <laughs> you remember this area was all opened up? Yep. Your basement was practically gutted. I'm take my shoes off. Brand new carpet. It's so cushy. Oh. So the big fight about the fireplace down here was do we take it all down, you know, and get rid of it completely? And it kind of looked really good to have your, your couch down here. So we've, we fought about this, and I said, can we install an electric fireplace? Damon looked into it exactly what you have. Actually, what I like about it is that the mantle that was upstairs was yes. saved, oh my God. brought down. <laughs> so we do have something left from the original fireplace. I wanted to leave that as part of the original house that you guys could actually remember what it looked like before. You probably don't want to remember, yeah. but it's part of the original house that you guys bought. Amazing. That was so thoughtful. That was really nice. <gasps> oh, oh my God. God. Um, oh Damon God. is such a good guy, actually. That was unexpected. Oh. Uh, look at this has been totally restructured, uh, bringing in the you know the Bowens and and continuing the foundation upwards. Every trade in here did a lot of work, and I think we almost drove them into the ground. Well, two thumbs up to these guys, <laughs> Absolutely. because uh, you know even my Can't daughter, I can. Them. She says I'm tired, Dad. I'm yeah, tired. I know. Oh my God, this is bananas! Like I just I want to play with them. <laughs> Isn't that funny, eh? All the work that was done in here, and what are you going to do? The washer and dryer out. It's a pleasure to meet well, you. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Here all the time. And I hope you enjoy it. Now you just get your furniture, you, set it up. I can't, yeah, you, you read our minds, like literally. Like, we planned on doing this eventually, yeah. and we had no idea you were going to go this far, but this is exactly what we wanted to do to well, this house. It's what you envisioned when you first bought it. Yeah. Yeah, and we didn't kidnap your furniture, it's coming tomorrow. We have it in a cube van, it's coming back. <laughs> okay. There's no ransom note or anything. Well, I'm so thankful for that. I don't know if I could ever repay the crew, the people that they've had in to do the work, Mike, Damon, everybody. I don't know how I could possibly thank them enough. Thank you so much. No worries. Enjoy your home. I really, really, really appreciate you guys and what you've done for us. And I'm going to stop talking now. <laughs> <laughs> you deserve it. I always say, get what you give, so you've done something right in your life. I, I like helping good people. Thank you. Uh, so good people. Very good people. <laughs> you pass me something to clean this with? Yeah, I'll get you something as soon as you help me with the washer and dryer. Oh, wait! <laughs> I've already done it! <laughs> I would have gladly done those. He was, he was afraid. Too strong. Don't tell him I said that. It was a joke! Delete it! <laughs> <laughs> Delete it! <laughs>